Revealed during the latest PlayStation State of Play, Silent Hill, the short message, is a new free-to-play horror game that stealth dropped on the PlayStation Store. It's also a surprising showcase for what the next mainline Silent Hill entry might end up looking like. The basic points are, the short message is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. It's a free downloadable demo, essentially, coming in at just 12 gigabytes in size. It's also built on Unreal Engine and developed by Hexadrive, the tech masterminds behind Okami HD and Zone of the Enders HD on PS3 many years back. And lastly, the whole thing is finishable in under two hours, with an entirely self-contained story. Spanning three chapters, it puts you in the shoes of Anita, who enters an apartment block in search of her deceased friend, Maya. Haunted by text messages from Maya and armed with nothing but a foam flashlight, the goal is to explore each decaying room, to unravel the mystery behind Maya and Anita's past, to uncover documents, solve the rare puzzle, to escape a horrifying figure in pursuit, and to do all of this while reality warps, twists the detailing of the building the further you explore. Let's address the elephant in the room first. The short message has major parallels with Kojima Productions' work on PT, released back in 2014 on PlayStation 4. Of course, PT was a surprise reveal at the time too, a free-to-play taster for what would have been the next Silent Hill game, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro's ill-fated Silent Hills project. PT's delisting from the PlayStation Store has, of course, given it something of a mythical status ever since, but the concept of running through the same area in a circuit, with new details and events being added each time, was a clever hook. It chronicled a descent in the main character's sanity, all seen through a first-person view. Tracked forward a decade then, and the short message makes an attempt at the very same concept. It's a bite-sized, psychological horror experience built around dark corridors, around eerie environmental design, around a reality that distorts the further you play. The short message even pulls a similar trick to PT by having the player loop around one area repeatedly with details changing to tell its story. So you could see this as a spiritual successor of sorts, 10 years on. All of this serves to excite Silent Hill fans old and new, to entice us for what might come in the next major installment. Which brings us to point number two, the short message's subject matter. As with Konami's disclaimer at the game's start, it explores heavier themes relating to mental health. Trauma, depression, suicide are not just a side note here, but the core topic of the game. It's embedded into the visual design of each area, from the apartment rooms crammed with post-it notes to the ghost-like apparitions lining the school halls, the art direction bewilders with often rich, at times upsetting detail. You'll be forced to search mouldy, locust-infested bathrooms, trolleys filled with baby dolls, and a nightmarish version of a school campus, all the while, at times, evading a mysterious figure covered in cherry blossoms. Much of this is interspersed with cutscenes, some in-engine, others using real-world footage, and once you reach the end of the game, so to speak, by escaping outside, you're then taken back to the start, back to the very first apartment room, to retrace your route with new darker details. New rooms open up, you get new text messages, written notes, and flashbacks to your friend Maya. It's not a typical game by any means. In the tradition of PT, it's a linear scripted set of events, but getting to the end does demand a keen eye for clues, solving the odd puzzle and escaping the terrifying creature. The short message may understandably not be to all people's taste then, but Hexadrive's art direction is very accomplished here. In using the environment to map out the main character's psychological state, the team ratchets up the tension well. It shocks with incredible effect. With all that being said, let's take a look at the technology itself, and while we're at it, let's switch on the frame rate graph. On the plus side, the game typically runs at a native 3840x2160, it's a full fat 4K, and while moments that run under 4K are possible, it does seem largely fixed in place. There's no dynamic resolution scaling involved here, which, for better or worse, as far as the performance is concerned, means the image stays razor sharp throughout. The idea of using your phone's flashlight for dark rooms also works well here. It's something of a horror game trope by this point, but having light bounce across each object in a dark room, casting shadows, 
creates this wonderfully chilling effect. The way Hexadrive changes the detail around you also generates an instant jump scare effect that's well exploited. Post effects like camera blur, film grain, and a glitch effect also help in this aspect by reducing visibility. And another nice touch, the mysterious figure in pursuit uses a decimated frame rate. It's purely for effect. Frames are chopped out of its movement, almost like the stop motion moments from Sam Raimi's Evil Dead films. Again, it creates this otherworldly result in the rare moments that it does appear. On to the downsides column then, and we have to address the frame rate. Yes, it's an odd choice to leave the game completely unlocked to 60fps, especially so given it's by a team of Hexadrive's caliber, with a track record of technically competent remasters. This time, it's fair to say there's been a bit of an oversight. The performance range is highly variable, going from as low as 25fps right up to 60fps depending on the scene. Fundamentally, we're in a performance no man's land, between 30 and 60 FPS while exploring most apartment rooms, with so much of play running at 45 FPS. It might be passable for some VRR supporting displays while it's closer to 60. Also, the camera and object motion blur do each help a little to blend the movement, but most of the time, you'll see this fluctuating frame rate manifest as constant judder in play. Keeping with performance, there are a few extreme cases to cover. On the upper end of the spectrum, we have the locker hall area, which does genuinely hit and hold 60fps. And likewise, the library segment is simple enough that it gets by at 60 without any real issue. Wandering the halls early on in chapter 1, before too many nightmarish details are added in, also gets as close to the mark. It's often between 50 to 60fps. Really then, it's only once more horrifying, gruesome details are layered over the top in later chapters that we see the most glaring issues. We find more trouble spots the further we play. As the environment alters in real time, during a late chase sequence for example, it plummets from 60fps right down to the 30fps line, and everything in between. The frame time readings become erratic for a spell, which causes the camera movement to become choppy. At this point, and also during any other chase sequence, the heavy post effects and rapid movements are a real trigger for sustained drops. The cutscenes in the short message also flag some issues. As I've mentioned, we get two types of cinematic, those rendered using Unreal Engine and also those using real-world filmed footage. Oddly enough, the real-world footage runs using a 30fps cap with uneven frame pacing. It introduces Judder that's most likely not present on the original film's recording. Still, the presentation of these filmed elements is clean and works surprisingly well in building the story. Swap over to the in-engine cutscenes though, and inevitably, the limits of real-time character rendering stick out. Character model detail, materials for skin, and light interaction are well handled on Unreal Engine. But the contrast in style with the actual footage of the cast only highlights its limitations. More to the point, the game's lowest frame rates arrive during these in-engine cutscenes. At times, it's capped at 30fps with uneven frame pacing. And at others, notably on the rooftops overlooking the foggy streets, it goes below 30fps. <laughs> Any close-up of Anita gives the PS5 its greatest stress point, which is surprising to see. Shots of the flower bed or the balcony area with the taxing fog effect are also big triggers for performance dips, but it's not entirely clear what the causes for drops around interiors. Despite the detail level across each room, which is impressively high, the experience is mostly spent walking narrow hallway areas. There is no need here to draw masses of detail across the distance. Most rooms also use your typical screen space ambient occlusion method for shading corners, and reflections where they appear on the varnished locker room floors also appear to depend on cube map textures. The more taxing SSR method for reflections is potentially used on mirrors, but the application there is rare at best. Plus, most environments often use baked lighting, rather than any bounce lighting or advanced GI technique. 
In theory then, this shouldn't tax the PS5 hardware to quite the extent we're seeing. One likely cause for drops though is that the game is typically fixed at a high 4K resolution, ambitious for an Unreal Engine title. It's a rigid value, with no flexibility to adjust to GPU load, and so a dynamic resolution system would have helped hugely here. Overall then, Silent Hill The Short Message is a welcome surprise from the PlayStation State of Play. As a free-to-play game, there's really nothing to lose by giving it a couple of hours. Plus, the fact it is short means it doesn't outstay its welcome. From a tech perspective, it's fascinating for offering up a sample of what may manifest as the next Silent Hill project. The engine choice, the first-person viewpoint, the striking visual design, much of this stands to potentially translate across to the full game. Especially so, given the short message's director, Motoi Okamoto, is also on the credits as producer for Silent Hill F, the ninth mainline entry in the series announced back in 2022. On that point, we'll really have to wait and see how that turns out. As far as the short message is concerned though, the mystery surrounding it works in its favour. Much like the surprise reveal of PT a decade ago, the abstract nature of such a small sample only builds excitement around the series' future. But that's all from me today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our patron at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But from me for now, thanks for watching.